down on the mountainside. Uh -huh. Jesus told them not to mention what they had seen mm -hmm. until after he had risen from the dead. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So once again, they found themselves in a very puzzled situation. Because, you know, they, they, they kept it to themselves. But, but, you know, they talked to themselves and said, what in the world is he talking about? Now, these are the same men that were in the inner circle that had walked with Jesus for a little bit over three years now. They've been right there with him, but they still didn't understand it. So they, they kept it to themselves. They said, no fight, but they wondered exactly what he meant about raising from the dead. Now they began asking him about something that the Jewish leaders had spoke about Elijah coming back, they, that Elijah must come back before the Messiah comes. That was the Jewish priests and the religious leaders in the synagogue. That's what they were telling everybody. Elijah must come before the Messiah comes. The Jewish leaders still would not accept the fact of who Jesus is. So Jesus agreed that Elijah must come first and prepare the way. And that he had, in fact, already come. And that he had been terribly mistreated. Just as the prophets had predicted. And Jesus asked them what the prophets had been talking about when they predicted that the Messiah himself would suffer and be treated with utter contempt. Jesus asked the disciples that. And you got to understand that you have preachers, pastors, that some of them, they're still not completely clear mm. on some things. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Tell the truth. But we got to understand. That's not taking anything away from them. That's right. It's just saying that no man knows it all. That's it. That's it. Amen. No man knows it all. We got to understand that in Isaiah 55 and 8, God told Isaiah to tell his people that my thoughts are not your thoughts, and my ways are not your ways. The Lord said that. So we got to understand that we don't think like God thinks, but he wants us to get to know him so that we can think like he thinks. Amen. Isaiah 55, 11 said, so my word that goes forth from my mouth, All right. it shall not return to me void. Right. So when God sends a word out, right. you better believe it shall accomplish what he pleases, and then it shall prosper in the thing for which he sent. God is still in charge. He's in control of it all. He knows what we're thinking before we even speak, before we even do it. It's important that we realize that God is God all by himself. And in case you don't know it, you better learn. Because no matter what we do, God is watching. No matter what we think, God already knows about it. So, at the bottom of the mountain as they came down, they saw a great crowd of people surrounding the other nine disciples that were down at the bottom of the mountain. And uh, some Jewish leaders were arguing with his disciples. They watched Jesus as he came down. He was still glowing. And then, as he came, they recognized who he was and they ran to greet him. Are we running to greet Jesus today? Are we considering him just to be another name that we have in our memory? What's all the argument about? That's what Jesus asked. All right. One of the men in the crowd spoke up and said, 
teacher. I brought my son for you to heal. He can't talk because he's possessed by a demon. And whenever the demon is in control of him, it dashes him to the ground. And he starts kicking about feverishly and foaming at the mouth. All right. And grind his teeth and, bec and become just rigid. Today we call that epilepsy, right? right. Y'all seen people with epilepsy? Mm -hmm. epilepsy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The man said, I, I beg your disciples. Uh -huh. I beg them to heal him. But they couldn't cast out that demon. That's it. They couldn't do it. Jesus said to his disciples, Oh, what little faith you have. Mm. He inquired of them, How much longer do I have to be with you mm -hmm. before you believe? How much longer must I be patient with you? Jesus is still patient with us now. Mm -hmm. He has a work for us to do right now. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you're the usher, a bench warmer, or whatever. Jesus has a work for each of us that have accepted him as our Lord and Savior. From the smallest child to the oldest, or shall I say the most seasoned saint in here. Mm -hmm. All right. He has a work for us to do. Okay. If there's nothing more than just telling somebody how he has brought you from a mighty long way. Yes, I'm reminded that there are short graves as well as long graves. The richest person in the world. He had to die too. That's right. Just like the poorest person in the world. Yes. So there's no respect of person when it comes down to the doorway to the next life. Death is the doorway. Mm -hmm. We must enter there into. Unless Jesus comes back before that time. Mm -hmm. And my yeah. friend, he's coming back. Oh yes. He's coming back. We don't know when, so the thing is, we must be ready mm -hmm. for him. Mm -hmm. It's important that we not just continue to come to church and be bench warmers and think that coming to church is going to be your salvation. Don't get it. Ephesians 2 and 8 said so we are saved by grace. Grace Amen. through faith in Jesus the Christ. Mm -hmm. So the king, nobody boasts about what they've done, what they've got, or how much they've paid in tithes or paid uh, to the church, or when they bought the church. We are saved by grace. That's right. Grace. Grace. Grace through faith. Faith is what makes you hope. Jesus is trying, he, he, he's walking with his disciples, he's still trying to get them to understand these basic principles. In Hebrews 6 1, it tells us that we need to move on from the trivial thing. As we grow in Christ, we continue to come to church Sunday after Sunday, week after week, year after year. Hebrews 6 chapter tells us that we shouldn't have to continue to lay the foundation of our belief. We should be able to move on to more mature things in the doctrine. All right. So that we can fulfill the commitment of Matthew 28 19. If we're going to continue to be babes in Christ, how can we make disciples? 
<laughs> we can't share the word or feed someone else God's word if we are still on milk ourselves. Right. We must move on from trivial matters. It's important that we understand that as mature Christians, we have to move on to the meat. The meat that God wants us to have so that we can share with others that do not know him. So that we can stand firm in our faith. Stand firm.